people that are, you know, that are looking for that big right hand or that big left hand, y'all are going to really love this video. So whenever you do this thing, let's talk about this one first. You're getting distance, right? Not only are you getting distance, you're setting up the right hand. We saw this in the fight I was just talking about, Taporia. Whenever you step down like this, you're planting all of your weight on this leg. And what does this do for you? It makes generating power for the overhand way easier, right? So whenever you step, you're doing this very often. You want to get in, get that distance, measure it whenever you're ready, right? That's what Taporia did versus Volk. And there's a lot of different ways that you can use feints to get power. That was just my first example. Now let's go, you guys, all love Mike Tyson. I see that in my videos. I love using Mike Tyson as an example too. So let's talk about how he moved to the left or the right to get more power in his punches. We'll talk about more famous fighters too. McGregor, Ali. All of these guys had different ways of accomplishing the same task. So whenever you have Tyson in front of you, his goal would be to move to the left or to the right. But rather than to move forward to throw the overhand, Tyson would move to the left to throw the left. The left hook, right? Or uppercut. Or he'd move to the right. Throw the right hook. Uppercut. That would be Tyson's special. All of these fighters have different ways. So let's talk about why. Why does this work? Why do you get more power whenever you move to the same side of your body? So look, I'm going to give you an example of like a spring. So imagine me as a spring. I'm loading my this side of my body. I'm loading all of my power. I'm coiled up like a, like a spring, like a snake, ready to go and explode that power, right? So rather than just standing in my static position, with this means just your regular boxing stance, your regular MMA stance, rather than doing that, I'm going to move to the left, loading up this power, throwing that left hand, rather than this. Right? That's the left hand. Now, if I move to the left, I get more power because I'm loading up this side of my body. You do the same with the right side. Both sides. Now, all of these people, they have different ways of accomplishing the same thing, right? So it's all about how do you move to generate this power? Now, think about this by yourself. We already had one, right? Going forward, throwing the right. Going left, throw the left. Make up one of your own in your head right now. Whatever you're thinking, right? So let's go with, I'm gonna have an, uh, an example in my head right now, O'Malley. What does O'Malley do, right? To get more power in his punch, he will have his hands down low and he'll have his chin down, right? What does this do? Whenever you have your hands down like this, you're closer to your opponent. This makes them think that you're an easy target, right? That like you're right there in front of them. It's all an illusion, an illusion for O'Malley. He's just trying to get more power in his right hand. Whenever he's down like this, they come forward, he steps back. Whenever they're close enough, he moves back. They miss, he throws that right hand. And what does this do? Like whenever you're moving back, you're generating power, right? You're moving your weight back and you're throwing the right hand. Also, when you have your hands down, sometimes if you have a really coiled up stance, it can have a lot of power, but also you can have your hands down and have more power too. What, how does this happen? It's because you have to go around with your punches rather than just straight forward and using your whole body. You use your momentum of your opponent and you just loop that punch around. That's what O'Malley's really good at, right? So at home, practice right now. I want you to think head movement. Or no, how about this? First, think about your footwork. Try, try not to use such a, a movement-based stance. I want you to try to keep your hands up and stay defensively responsible, right? I used O'Malley as an example, but those are the oddballs. They, uh, they focus on reflexes, head movement. We're not going to go on that right now. What we're going to be doing is solid mechanics right now that will keep you safe. So let's say keep your feet planted. Not on your toes, right? Keep your hands up. And I want you to think first, the first round, do a five-minute round, three-minute round, whatever you're comfortable with, of just moving your head, right? 
And I don't want you to think of only moving your head. I want you to think of what strike you're gonna use. What strike would be good here, right? So if I move my head here, I got a good jab. I can turn my hips out, I can pop that jab out. I move to the left, I've got that good hook I was talking about with Tyson. Moving your head, I want you to think, move your head, hook, are you gonna use a cross? Now that's the first round. I want you to think. I don't want you to actually do this. Visualize it. Visualize. All right, I'm going to go here, right to the liver, right? I'm going to slip this way, just like that. Now, whatever your combo is going to be, just think about first slipping a punch. Now they're going to be exposed. I haven't talked about this yet. Whenever you slip somebody's punch, they're exposed just like this, right? Now you need to find those targets. Based on whatever punch you're throwing, I throw this punch, what am I exposed to right here? My chin, right? So you wanna, if you see somebody, they wanna throw that right hand really bad, right? Like uh, O'Malley a second ago. You wanna use that pullback counter and then hit them right on the chin. This is how coaches find weaknesses in their, um, their opponents, you know? Not their opponents, but you know what I'm saying. So this is all about head movement and footwork. I've been talking about footwork for a long time now, but this is going to help you with flat-footed boxing, power-oriented style, right? There's going to, I might make a video on how this uh, on-the-toe style is good too. It's good for kicks, it's good for being faster, more mobile, but I'd say the safer route is to just have your defenses up and focus on these feints to counter and then punish them. That's what it's all about, right? And this is perfect with pressure. Like I always say, pressure, pressure, pressure. Keep your hands up, pressure them. Just find these little openings and then capitalize on them. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, check out the Punch Podcast every Monday. We watch UFC cards uh, live while they're happening. Um, videos every week and uh, i'm on tiktok instagram all that bullshit thank you guys for watching to the end drop a comment what do you think about this video did you learn something if not give me a suggestion of what you would like to learn but uh yeah guys thank you all for watching and uh i'll see you guys in the next video later <laughs>